Welcome back to Moose on the Loose, your source of uncorrupt media. My name's David. Today, we've got a speech here from Pierre Polyev, the future Prime Minister of Canada. There's some chilling truths he tells in the speech. Check it out. So everyone looks in, like they're in great shape. You're all just back from your $9,000 a knife stay with friends like most Canadians, right? That's what our Prime Minister said. Can you imagine that? He said, like most Canadians, I stayed with friends. An $89,000 vacation for free from friends. Wow, geez, I, I think I have the wrong friends. Uh, <laughs> actually, I have the best friends in the world. <laughs> and they'll let me sleep on the couch once in a while if necessary. <laughs> but I think most Canadians would feel a long way from home if they had an $89,000 vacation, wouldn't they? But everything feels a long way from home right now, doesn't it? You know, when people stop me on the streets, they tell me they don't recognize the country. I met a lady who immigrated here from Punjab just yesterday at the airport. And she said to me, where is my Canada? What happened to this place? It used to be that she lived safe in her neighborhood. She could earn a decent living, buy a house, raise her kids with nutritious food. But now she's worried she might lose her home altogether. And she didn't say so, but I think that she's eating at a food bank. That was only minutes after I spoke to a 28-year-old. I had previously seen her as a CATSA screener uh, a few months ago. She then told me she had done the calculation based on her monthly savings that it was going to take her well into her 40s to make her first down payment on a home. And of course, let's be honest, her, she said her biological clock is ticking. She wants to start a family something that's not easy living in her parents' basement. Today, though, her problem was different and new, but related. Uh, not only is she living in her parents' basement, but she has to help the family pay the mortgage, which has gone up by $15,000 a year. So now, not only is she, not, is she worried about whether she'll ever own a home, she's worried that her parents, with whom she lives, might, might not be able to keep that home. It's astonishing the level of cost now. It's just absolutely crazy. And also astonishing that the government... The Trudeau Liberals haven't pushed forward more regulations, making it easier for people to do tiny houses and van life. I do uh, seasonal van life when I go hike mountains all over the place. And often you get kicked out of places you're treated like absolute garbage. I went to the national parks and they, they said, oh, you can't stay there unless you have an overnight permit. And I bought them <laughs> annual pass. And they still said, well, that like the, <laughs> I end up getting a warning because of it. And it's just like... I can't even sleep in a dirt parking lot in my own vehicle. And sorry, I don't have the $800 a night to stay at uh, Chateau Lake Louise. It's just, you know, that's the state our country's in. That's life after eight years of Justin Trudeau. After eight years of Justin Trudeau, everything costs more with the worst inflation in 40 years. After eight years, of Justin Trudeau promising debt was consequence free because interest rates were low. They've shot up in the fastest relative terms in Canadian history, and they are a direct result of his deficit spending. After eight years of Trudeau, work doesn't pay. You make it, he takes it. After eight years of Trudeau, housing costs have doubled. The needed rent has doubled. The needed down payment for your average home doubled. The average mortgage payment for a new home doubled and before we go again blaming the rest of the world for some f phenomenon that is out of his control let us be very clear about this the housing inflation in canada is the worst or very close to the worst of any developed nation it's so true i'm glad he brought that up like the first thing trudeau jumps at is Oh, uh, uh, ooh, 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 uh, ooh, um, it's uh, 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 COVID, or uh, it's uh, ooh, uh, ooh, Russia, uh, ooh, everyone's going through this. Uh, ooh. Housing costs have risen 40% faster than incomes under Trudeau, which is by far the worst in the G7. It is the second worst in the OECD. It is double the OECD average. Many OECD countries have actually seen housing affordability improve over the last eight years. This is not a problem that has been dropped on Justin Trudeau's lap. It is a problem that he created with his inflationary spending and by continually building up the local bureaucracies that block home building. 
At this rate, too, with the amount of people that have been brought in in the last handful of years here, it's going to take a long time for our builders to build enough houses to get these prices to come down. It's The suffering is going to be lasting for many years, sadly. Let's jump ahead a bit here. This is a 40-minute video, so I'm going to just bring you the highlights. With a, with a common sense plan. And we're going to give people a very simple choice in the next election. On the one hand, you will have a costly coalition of Justin Trudeau and the NDP that take your money, tax your food, punish your work, double your housing costs, and unleash crime and chaos in your community. Or you can have the common sense conservatives who will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. That's the choice. A common sense plan that will bring home lower prices by axing the carbon tax, a tax that Justin Trudeau and the NDP want to quadruple the 61 cents a litre. We will take it off entirely, everywhere. We'll start this session with a relentless focus on passing Bill C-234 to take the carbon tax off our farmers. Just as a heads up for everyone, carbon tax round two, are we in, I think we're, yeah, round two right now, uh, is going into place April 1st of this year. So you're gonna see a of everything go up again. So I'm kind of thinking of stocking up on food at least, which is kind of hard because it's already expensive, but like Trudeau's just killing us, man. We know that lowering the carbon tax not only saves us money when we gas up and heat our homes, but we take that tax off the farmers and truckers who bring our food, we can afford to eat again. We're going to cap government spending and cut government waste to balance the budget and bring down inflation and interest rates. How do we do that? Well, we get rid of the $35 billion infrastructure bank the, that has not completed a single solitary project. The $1 billion green slush fund, 15% of whose funds are already identified as having been misappropriated and mismanaged by corruption. Something spon that, that the bureaucrats say resembles the sponsorship scandal. That scandal is $150 million that the Liberals have, uh, I have a video on, they, they essentially took it and they just tried to tuck it into their, their pockets, basically. It's just horribly corrupt. We'll get rid of the $54 million Arrive Can app. We'll cut back on the $21 billion of external consultants. That works out to $1,400 in taxes for every family in Canada just to pay for external consultants. A 100% increase in eight years. We will get rid of that waste and we will bring the work inside the bureaucracy at a lower price to Canadians. We will, we will bring in... Imagine spending that kind of money on consultants. Yeah, we all know that Justin Trudeau's like good childhood buddy owns a consultant uh, consulting agency. And we will cut back on the money that is sent out of this country to other places. They have, Trudeau's been funding foreign terrorists and dictators, calling it aid. He gave money to UNRWA. Right? We warned, we warned what would happen if you gave money to UNRWA. We cut the funds for UNRWA when we were in government. And what happened? Justin Trudeau funded the same organization whose members helped carry out the genocidal October 7th attack. Justin Trudeau should be ashamed of himself for the way that he has spent our money to fund this terrorist organization. And we will not only cut back that, we will stop funding the Beijing-controlled Asian Infrastructure Bank. We should be building pipelines and roads in Canada, not in Asia. That bank too, the Infrastructure Bank, so the, I think Christia Freeland, uh, somewhere, I can't remember what the video was, she admitted they were basically pulling out of that because <laughs> I haven't done a video on it, so I don't have all the details, but I know that it was basically a big scam. Like they probably basically just took our money. Like it's just absolute waste. And we're, our people deserve to have their work rewarded. We need to end the, reward, the war on work where a, a mother of three who earns an extra dollar loses 80 cents to clawbacks and taxes. That is outrageous. No wonder we have a hard time getting more workers. We punish work. A common sense conservative government will lower income tax and reform clawbacks so people bring home more of each dollar that they earn and hard work once again pays off in this country. <laughs> Our common sense plan is to have a national merit-based test that people can take in a couple of months so they can prove they're qualified, get to work, and we can have more doctors, more nurses, 
better paychecks for our people. And speaking of paychecks, we're going to remove the government gatekeepers that were created by C69 that blocks our resource sector. <laughs> we're going to we're going to bring it home. We're going to bring it home. Justin Trudeau wants the lithium for electric cars to be mined and refined by China, burning coal. He wants the oil to come from Saudi Arabia and Venezuela, on which he just recently lifted sanctions as they block key candidates for running in that election. He wants, he wants the paycheck, he wants instead of paychecks going to Canadian plumbers, Canadian pipe fitters, Canadian trades workers. He wants the money to fund Putin's war machine by directing natural gas sales to that country. Common sense conservative governments will approve our resource projects. We will repatriate the production and paychecks to this country. We will turn dollars for dictators into paychecks for our people in this country. Bring it home. Bring it home. Bring it home. Bring it home. This is insane. You know, it used to be the average mortgage payment on a brand new home was 1400 bucks when I was the minister, now it's 3500 The average rent, $900 when I was minister, now it's about 2000 This is insane. We Our housing is now 25 to 45% more expensive than the Americans, even though they have eight times the population on a smaller landmass. Why? Bureaucracy blocks home building. It now takes seven years to get a building permit. This adds enormous costs to each built home. $1.2 million for a new home built in Vancouver is just government. It's the biggest cost, more than land, labor, and lumber. Just imagine that, $1.2 million just for the cost of bureaucracy in the government. Well, when I used to live in Vancouver uh, years ago, I lived there for 13 years. I remember when I was in school in 2002, I looked out and I wanted to eventually buy a place. It was my dream to live at Cambian Broadway just outside of downtown. There's houses right there. You could buy a house for, it was around $420,000 for a house, detached house. I know, crazy, because today those houses are $3 million. And there was a couple of my uh, classmates that got jobs right out of school into the video game industry. And they potentially could have bought a house there within maybe a couple of years if they, or if they got a down payment from their parents or something. But the rest of us struggled and struggled and, and then the prices kept on going up and it was just this chasing game and we could never, it's just like, if you barely got enough down payment for a, for a house or something, then, uh oh, now the houses are 500, oh, they're 600, now they're 800, now they're a million. And then it's just, it got out of reach. And eventually we would start looking outside, like, okay, not near downtown, we go to North Van and everything just got pushed and pushed and pushed. It's like this game, you're chasing it, you can never catch it. So the fact you're sp spending 1.2 million on bureaucracy, there should be almost none. Like it should be very minimal. Basic survey, you know, marking out the, the land borders, uh, understanding what the, you know, what's going on with the sewers, this and that. I think in most places, what, is it, what does it normally cost? 20, 30 grand? Like if it's in a small town, it shouldn't cost a million bucks plus. Our common sense plan is going to bring results-based financing. Realtors are paid for the number of homes they build. Excuse me, realtors are paid for the number of homes they sell. Builders are paid for the number of homes they build. I want the local bureaucracies to be paid for the number of homes they permit. I want them to be incentivized every day in every way to free up land and speed up permits so that our builders can build. We will require cities permit 15% more home building per year as a condition of getting financing from the federal infrastructure programs. They beat the target, they get a bonus. They miss the target, they pay a fine. We require every federally funded transit station have high density apartments all around and even on top so seniors and students live next to the, to the bus and train. We'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings, thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build. And we will require CMHC approved financing for apartment complexes in two months, not two years. If the executives don't hit the target, by law, they will be fired. Yeah. Common sense. That is common sense, an actual common sense plan, which we don't have right now in Canada. Those homes will be in safe neighborhoods. We will end Justin Trudeau's catch and release system, which has unleashed crime and chaos in our communities. He has allowed the same 40 violent offenders to be arrested 6,000 times in Vancouver because they were released within mere minutes. The criminal is out before the police do the paperwork these days. We're going to stop the crime by stopping the criminals. Very simple. The root cause of crime is criminals. Put the criminals in jail, you have less crime. It will be 
Jail, not bail. Jail, not bail for repeat violent offenders. We will bring in treatment and recovery to bring home our loved ones drug free. The, the whole jail thing is insane. Like I don't obviously it's driven by money. I think maybe they save money on jail costs by not having people in jail. And that's why they just let everyone commit crimes. But it's kind of like, yo, like it's basically pushing people to commit crimes if there's no penalty. It's stupid. Of course, though, it's this is Justin Trudeau's uh, Canada. Yes, bring them home drug free. Now, that's a hopeful message because we love our brothers and sisters who suffer from this illness and we want to, to help them overcome the illness and have good lives, raising families, building our economy. That is the compassionate and the right thing to do. And the right thing to do as well is to stand on the side of the law abiding licensed firearms owners who are statistically proven to be the least likely to commit a crime with a gun. We will re reverse Trudeau's ban on our sports shooters and our hunters, and we will instead go after the real gun criminals. We will reinforce the borders, and we will inspect and scan the shipping containers to stop our automobiles from being shipped out of this country to faraway places by thieves and criminals. Absolutely insane where we are today, but there's a breath of fresh air there there's some hope there obviously you know polyav has a real plan to tackle this but it will be a long journey we if we somehow are able to get more construction workers and builders and have the bureaucracy go away we can catch up but it's still to build houses it takes time we're gonna have a, a multiple years runway just to catch up but we basically have to shut the borders to all immigration foreign students and a lot of foreign workers to do this so i'm Curious to see how aggressive Polyev gets with it uh, once he does get elected. Is he going to put a 100% ban on it? Or I would ban corporations from owning houses, period, as well as foreign ownership, done, none. I'd also stop immigration completely until we catch up with our houses. So I'm curious what, to see what he does. We just got to struggle this one out here until 2025, until we can get uh, Trudeau, the, the monster in power, out of power. So hope you guys stay warm, stay fed. I'll see you guys in the next one.